Okay, so we're going to be making cabbage rolls today. And these are actually going to be Ukrainian cabbage rolls. Um, my understanding is that cabbage rolls actually originate from the Ukraine. So even though you may see Polish and you might see German, these are going to be Ukrainian. Um, they're also called holopshi. So just in case you want to remember that. So let's go through some of the ingredients that you're going to need and some of the equipment you're going to need to make these. All right? Well, they're cabbage rolls, so you're going to need some cabbages. And two or three. Three is going to make quite a lot. Uh, two would probably be more than enough if you're just making for yourself and give you probably three or four meals with them, having two or three in each meal. Uh, so you need some cabbages. Uh, you're going to need some rice. Uh, for two cabbages, a cup of rice. For three cabbages, probably a cup and a half of rice. Is what you make. And this is just good old whole grain white rice, nothing special about the rice. Uh, you're going to need some tomato soup. Okay, uh, if we're going to make a short batch, three would probably be more than enough. Uh, four if we're going to make a little bit larger batch, which we're going to do today. You're also going to need some bacon. Um, I like getting the thick bacon, so uh, it doesn't really matter because we're going to cut it up anyways, as you'll see. But, but you're going to need some bacon. Um, you're going to need some salt, and you're going to need some, some pepper. So those are all the ingredients that we're going to need. And you, we're going to be uh, frying up the bacon, so you're going to need a fairly large uh, frying pan that can hold that whole pound of bacon once we get it cut up into small pieces. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a pot with a lid large enough to be able to cook the rice, because that's kind of important. Um, and you're going to need at least one or two fairly large um, boiling pans. Uh, we're going to use these for two purposes. One is that we're going to have to boil the cabbage a little bit and make it pliable and then we're going to end up uh, using one of these to actually cook them in. So you're going to need that kind of equipment. Okay, um, the last little tools we're going to need some knives so, um, and a cutting board. Uh, sharp knives are very, very important. Uh, a serrated knife is going to be very good if you're going to be cutting the bacon because it doesn't stick to the blade. Uh, you're going to need this for cutting the, um, the uh, cabbage, as you'll soon see. And you're going to also need a small knife, so we're going to need a, a small paring knife as well. So those are the, some of the things we're going to need to, to get cutting. So let's start with the preparation. Okay, so um, today um, in the preparation of our cabbage rolls, I'm going to be assisted by my granddaughter, Melissa, who is going to help us out a little bit here today. So the big thing about making cabbage rolls is preparation. There's a lot of preparation in them. So the actual making of the cabbage rolls is pretty simple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cook up some rice. So we've got some good old plain rice here. Uh, again, uh, follow the instructions. Uh, I'm not going to, in this pre presentation, really do um, every little step uh, on the video. So you're going to have to kind of remember how to just do something on your own. But I'm going to cook up about a cup and a half of rice. So there's about a cup and a half of rice. And as you can see, and what I need is some water. So I'm going to go to my here and I'm going to get another. Now for this particular rice, I'm going to need about uh, three cups of water. So there's two. And one more. Yep. Now some people will put uh, a little bit of oil inside, a little cooking oil inside the rice. If you want to do that, you can. All right, you can cut that. Okay, so while we're waiting for the water to boil for the rice, we can do some other jobs. For example, we need to cut the rice up. So that's the one thing we're going to do is to cut this into very, very small squares and we're going to fry it up. So I'm going to take some, take this out. And again, I tend to like the thicker the, the bacon, the better. I, I like to use it nice, thick pieces. Um, it just makes a nice job. And I'm just going to pull that out of, the, out of there. Again, you need some really sharp cutting utensils. If you use anything that's not very, um, very sharp, you're going to find this a very, very difficult job indeed. So I like to use a serrated knife. It works very, very well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this into some very, very small pieces. 
okay? Just like that. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut those in half too, but probably not today. But that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them into some pretty small slices and get that ready for the frying pan. Okay? Okay, so as you can see, we've now got the bacon all cut up into small pieces. It's about a quarter of an inch wide. Uh, will be more than enough. And we're going to cook this, but we're not going to cook it like we were going to cook bacon and eggs. This is not going to be crisp. Uh, we're going to cook this just so that it's cooked because ultimately the cabbage rolls will be thrown in the oven and baked for uh, three and a half hours at low heat. So it'll really get a chance to get cooked. So you don't really need to, um, to cook it all that much. Uh, just, just, just get it cooked so that it's, it is cooked through, but not crisp. Okay, we are, our, our water's boiled for the rice, so I'm just going to go over and grab it here. Put it in, stir it around, and throw it on low heat. In fact, I'm going to use my back burner here for that. I'm going to throw it on very, very low heat, cover it up, and like most rice, you're going to cook it for 15 minutes. And I'm going to use a timer, if you have a timer, uh, I would suggest you use a timer so that you don't overcook it. So that's going to basically start cooking at, at low heat. I'm just going to grab the timer here and put it in for 15 minutes. And away it goes. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook that bacon. So I'm going to move this out of the way for right now. And I'm going to put my large frying pan, and the larger the better. And I'm going to throw this on. Now, one of the things I find to cook the bacon, don't cook it at high heat. That also stops it from getting it overcooked. So I'm just going to go over and get the bacon. And just take the whole darn mess of it and throw it into the pan. Just like that. Cover it up. And we are now basically making the, uh, the ingredients that goes inside the cabbage rolls. So it's going to be mostly rice and, and bacon. So when the rice is cooked, we'll let it cool. When the bacon is done, we'll get back to showing you how we mix it all up. Okay, so uh, the rice is cooking. Uh, it's got about another 10 minutes to go. Uh, the big thing about the, the bacon is as it's cooking, you want to kind of just stir it up and move it around. Uh, I've got it on pretty low heat. So this is going to take some time. This doesn't usually, uh, unlike cooking bacon and eggs, which takes a few minutes, uh, I'm going to let this cook in here probably for at least 10 or 15 minutes uh, because I don't want it to get crispy. I don't want it um, overcooked. So I'm going to do that from, from time to time to make sure that it, in fact, doesn't get too crispy. So i got to keep a good eye on it. All right, so now what we're going to do, uh, as that's working, we're going to work on the next ingredient, which is the actual cabbage itself. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the cabbage. This is going to require a couple of steps. Um, one of the first things we need to do is we need to get these leaves off of the cabbage. And the easiest way of doing that is to boil it and actually almost not thoroughly cook the leaves, but give them a good um, uh, cooking in hot boiling water. Now, to get the leaves off, there's a little trick to it. Because uh, if I just threw this into the water like this, uh, it would be kind of hard to, to get the leaves off of this center stem. So what I'm going to do with my very, very sharp knife, I'm going to cut, if you can kind of just see right here, I'm going to cut, oh, about an inch off the top, and I'm going to cut that off. And then what I'm going to do, and this is where you have to be kind of careful when you're working with anything sharp, is that in about this area here, so in about a, you know, I don't know, what's that, three, four inch radius, I'm going to cut diagonally so that the blade is going into, towards the core of the cabbage. And you've got to be careful, just do this nice and slow. That way you keep all your digits, just in case you may use them again tomorrow. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to take my time. And all I'm trying to do, the reason for that, is I'm trying to get at the all of the thick rind that runs on the back of the, of the cabbage leaves, so that when I throw them in the water, they're going to fall off the head of the cabbage with, with ease. I'm not going to have to fight it very much. So as you see, I'm just kind of slowly cutting along until I finally get it out. So there you go. So now it's, it's taken out. And as you can see, all the cabbage leaves now 
are going to no longer are really, once I get it boiled, stick it into boiling water, they're going to fall off rather easily. And that's kind of what we want to do. All right, so we got Melissa here helping me out as she cuts the cabbage. And again, she's doing it slow. One of the things that you have to be patient is that this is a pretty uh, uh, thick cabbage, so you want to, as you do this, you can do it two, three times, maybe four times around, each time going a little bit deeper. So the first cut would be a fairly shallow cut, and then with each time, it's going to get deeper and deeper into the cabbage. And of course, if you're doing it on a 45 degree angle, uh, eventually you'll, you'll get it completed. You're doing a great job. Okay, so the reason why we're doing this again is that we want the leaves to fall off the head of the cabbage. And we're only going to use about the, this much of the leaves. Once we get down into the real inner core of the cabbage, the leaves are going to be way too small. Uh, and even, even Kayla agrees with me on that one, you can hear there in the background. <laughs> so you don't want to be using, uh, so that you don't have to cut it too, too deep. So it's gonna, you're going to end up using the, the bigger leaves. The smaller leaves, we're just going to have to throw them away. Okay, now we're, uh, we're going to take a look at the bacon here, and you can see that this is pretty much uh, getting done here. Uh, we probably don't need to cook it too much more uh, as we stir it around. Um, and our rice is done as well. So now we're going to probably let this cool as we um, get ready to actually get prepare our, um, our um, cabbage rolls, our cabbage for rolling. All right, so now what we've got is we've got a couple of pots of water boiling here because the next job is we're going to take the leaves off these, uh, off these heads and so we can make them nice and pliable. Now I've got two pots of water going here, they're both full. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this upside down. Now be careful you don't burn yourself on this because you don't want to drop it in the water and splash yourself, all right? So I'm going to just take my time and just drop it real closely into the water and you can see that it's going to sit now there for probably about five minutes. And in about five minutes, the, that, the water will get through the, the cabbage and it will start to allow me to start taking those cabbage head leaves off. Now, why, am I, uh, why have I got this extra pot? This is kind of that, as I'm peeling the leaves off, some of them may not be fully uh, pliable. So I'm going to throw them in the secondary pot. That allows me to kind of get a little bit of a production line. Now a couple of other pieces of, of equipment that you're going to need when you're doing this is you're going to definitely need something to get those leaves off with. So some sort of a um, utensil like this will help you to, to grab them and peel them. And actually they, sometimes they're a little stubborn so I'll use an extra little knife and just kind of make sure that I can, I can peel them apart which I'll show you when I get that part. Uh, I need something to put the leaves on so you're going to need some sort of a tray as well. Uh, we're going to probably have more than enough, more than enough so we're going to have two, uh, two trays here to do that work. So we're going to let that sit for about, um, we're going to let that work for a while. But while that's working, we're going to now mix up the actual um, rice and the bacon. So let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, we've got our rice, and it's, it's made, and it's cooled a little bit. I'm going to take a little bigger pot. Uh, this one may not um, be um, uh, big enough to do some stirring, because we're going to do a little bit of mixture of the bacon and the rice. So uh, here's my bacon. I'm going to just uh, throw it in there. I mean, there's my rice. I'm going to throw that in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bacon and I'm going to take all of that and I'm going to throw it in here. And some people may not put all the bacon um, grease that is in there. Some people will. I tend to like it, uh, so I put everything in there. So we add those two things together. And now we're just going to kind of mix that up. Into a nice mixture. And this is where you're going to have a little bit of ingredients. Salt to flavor. It's up to you how much you want to put in. Uh, I usually throw in about a tablespoon or so of salt. Uh, that way people can salt them on their own if they're a little bit worried about their sodium. The... Um, um, Pepper, you want to put a lot on. Um, Ukrainians like their pepper, uh, so the pepper is big. So don't be uh, shocked by how much I'm throwing in here because it may seem like a lot. But here I'm kind of covering almost the entire surface with pepper. And that's the first uh, application of the pepper. I'm going to move this around a little bit. 
Mmm, you can even smell them. They smell good, don't they? I'm talking to my granddaughter. Okay, so that's stirring around. And now some more pepper. So you can pepper to taste, and again, people can season their own once they're cooked if they want more or less. Well, well, if they want more, they can't take less because they're already in there. But as you can see, I'm putting quite a bit in there, and that should just be about do it. And I'm going to stir that around. Now as I'm doing that, the, the cabbage behind me is probably getting pretty close to the first head that we can start to take the leaves off it. Okay? And there we go, that's basically making, and that's the ingredient. Now we're going to let this cool a little bit because ultimately we've got to stuff the cabbage leaves with this. So I'm not even going to cover this up right now, I want to cool it off a little bit. Um, and it'll get quite cool because by the time we get all the cabbages done and get them prepared for rolling, this should be cool enough that we can actually start working with it. Alright, now we're back at the, um, the cabbage and our first head has been sitting in there for about five minutes. So I'm going to carefully, and again, I uh, can't caution you enough, um, this is hot water in here, and, and this thing is kind of a, an unwieldy thing to turn around. So you want to make sure that when you're doing it, you're not going to splash yourself. So as you see, I've, I've, it's been cooking for about five minutes, and you can see the first leaf already has kind of already fallen off. So I'm just going to throw it in there and let it cook a little longer. Now what, I'm doing two things by doing that. One is that I'm allowing the rest of the leaves, I can start taking those off. And they come off on order. You can see that they're, the way they're wrapped around the cabbage, there's a particular order to them. All right. So um, now the outside pieces are going to actually not be used actually in making the cabbage rolls. We're going to need some of these outside pieces to line the, um, the pot that we're going to cook these in. Uh, because we're going to cook them for a while in the oven, and if we don't line the pot, the cabbage rolls will burn, the, uh, the actual green. So some of these big leaves that, that we get off here um, are only going to be used for lining the, the, the pot. So, and we're going to have, with the three cabbages that we're going to prepare today, we're going to have plenty of cabbage leaves. It's not going to be an issue for us. And as you can see, I'm just throwing those into, uh, taking them off, throwing them there, and then I'm going to take some of these and just throw them in here as well as it, as they, as it boils a little bit more, because they're not, they're not quite done yet. I'm just trying to see if I get some order to them all. Sometimes they get a little stubborn. And if they're a little stubborn, that means by sometimes you're just going to have to either try to work it off or let it cook just a little bit longer. So I'm just going to let that sit there for a little bit and, and cook inside that water. Okay, so we've got uh, the leaves being boiled in the secondary pot. Uh, and the nice thing about peeling them off and putting them in the secondary pot, these leaves that weren't getting to the water uh, are now getting to the water and are also being cooked. So it kind of serves as a, a quick way of getting this particular task done. Um, again, um, the, the object of this is to make the cabbage really pliable when you roll the cabbage rolls. You can't really overcook them. Uh, six to eight minutes is probably enough, but if you went eight to ten minutes, you're not really going to end up um, having any real problem uh, with them. They're not going to fall apart in your hand. Okay, Melissa here is uh, working the, uh, the, the the cabbage, and sometimes you really have to pull pull hard on them to, to get them off because they're wrapped around, especially as you get down lower in the um, in the core of the cabbage. Now you're not going to again once you get to a point where they're a little too small, you're going to be making really small cabbages. So chances are uh, you really don't want to use uh, too much more of the cabbage than we've already got here. As you can see, we're just about uh, reaching the end of this. This is about as much we're going to get out of this cabbage. And of course, we're using the secondary pot. Now, one of the other little tricks that we do is that um, back there, we've got a little boiling water that we boil because, as you can see, the wa wa water level has dropped here. Uh, and so having some boiling water handy allows me to continue the production line without having to stop and let the water boil inside the pot. Okay, good job, Melissa. Thank you. Okay, and we're also... Um, taking these leaves out, they've been sitting there, well, we're probably now looking at maybe eight to ten minutes that they've actually been boiling. Um, if they're kind of, you can see they're translucent a little bit, you kind of see through them a bit. That's kind of giving you an indication that they're, they're probably well done. And even if they sit outside of the water, they're still kind of cooking a little bit. Now we're going to let those cool because eventually we're going to use them to wrap and uh, they'll uh, be a little too hot to hold. 
All right, so when we're taking the leaves off, just remember that these cabbages are all, um, you know, the leaves are interlocked. So you got to take them off in order, you know. If you try to take a leaf from underneath the leaf, you'll only wreck the leaves. So you really do have to make sure that you, uh, you find a little puzzle, if you will, as you pull them off of the, uh, of the cabbage head. So when you're taking the, um, the cabbage leaves off the cabbage head, um, pull up on the, on the leaf. Don't pull out away. Kind of pull it up and towards the core. That way you'll end up um, not ripping the cabbage uh, leaf that much. Because remember, we've got to make cabbage rolls out of these, so we don't want to go uh, ripping them all up. So that's the thing that you need to do. And as you can see, we've got the secondary boiling here. Once you've got them from the main pot to the second pot, you can leave them in there for another couple of minutes um, and just make sure that they are they are thoroughly uh, cooked. And if you want, you can start stripping off the ones in the bottom. Uh, that way you can make some more room for new leaves. This is really is more like a production of, um, of making the leaves. Uh, this is probably the, if, if I was to say which is the hardest part of making these darn things, this is probably the part that's the most time consuming uh, and, and not say the toughest, but it's the part that takes the longest. Doing a great job, Melissa. Thank you. All right, another important ingredient that I didn't mention, of course, as you're making these, is a really good single malt scotch. Uh, I prefer a Glenlivet, 18 years or better, would be just about perfect. All right, so I'm going to try and make sure. Now, of course, they don't go into cabbage rolls. They go into the cabbage roll maker, which is me. All right, and one of the things that you need to do is, is Melissa, if you'll come a little closer, uh, I'm going to demonstrate that one of the problems with, with a cabbage is it has this big, thick rind at the back of the leaf. Can you see that? All right, so we want to get rid of that. So we're going to take a, a sharp knife, and I'm going to, without taking any of my fingers off, I'm going to slice that as close to the... I'm going to get rid of some of it. Okay, so now you can see it's going to be nice and pliable. So when I put some filling in there, the rice uh, mixture, it's going to roll really, really nicely. So what I have to do now is I need to do that with all of them. Now, I'm going to use some of these bigger leaves. So when I see a leaf that's really big, I may not use that as a cabbage roll. I may use that as a liner. So I tend to put those off to the corner. So you can see some of these. They're darker green. They came off of the very first part of the cabbage. I still take that rind off because I'm still going to have to manipulate them a little bit. But I'm going to put them over to the side here and use those probably as lining leaves so that my cabbage rolls won't burn when I've got them inside the, inside the um, inside baking, when I'm cooking them in the oven. All right, so there you go. That's, it's all it takes. Just, you know, just try to get as much as you can uh, off that back. If I'm going to take one that I'm going to use, you can see this one here, I'm going to use the beautiful looking leaf. I'm just going to take it back, and I'm going to go back about, what, four, six inches, something like that, depending on the size of the leaf, and I'm just going to give it a little slice and it's just you're going to see how nice that makes it rule for you. Okay, well, uh, we're about an hour or a little bit more into this project since we started. Uh, we've got the cabbage now fully uh, cooked and we've taken all of the, the rinds off the back. We've got our rice and bacon mixture uh, done. We've got uh, some tomato soup uh, in cans. This is just good old Campbell's tomato soup that we're going to use as part of the cooking process. So now we got to make the cabbage rolls, but there's one last thing that we have to do before we actually start the production, and that is to make sure that they don't burn, and I've talked about this a couple of times. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of those big old lettuces from the bottom here, some of these big ones that were lettuce, lettuce sorry, uh, we got another cook in the background here. Um, take some of these big leaves that we have here, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of Notice if you can kind of, kind of come in close here, you'll see that what we're going to do is we're going to line this entire pot with these big leaves. So we're going to make sure, because we don't want the actual cabbage rolls at any time touching the edge of the pot. Because again, they're going to sit in an oven for 325 for about uh, three hours. So um, they will burn if they don't have this protection. So I'm just taking these leaves, these big ones, and we're just kind of laying them out here. Doesn't have to be perfect. And, you know, I cut the rind off them even though um, we're not going to use them as uh, cabbage rolls because, again, it makes them just a little bit easier to handle. So you can see we've got quite a few. Now, we're going to not only line the bottom uh, and the sides, but we're going to line the top once we've got them all made and we've actually got them all sitting in there. 
we're going to actually also uh, use some for the top of the the, the pot. So let me just give this a tear here, and you can see that we're going to just give those a really good a good lining up here. Let's see if we got a couple. There's one right here. All right, so this is kind of important because um, the last thing you want to do is go through all this work and then find out you've got a, a real burnt mess at the bottom. So this is, this is kind of important. All right, we are reached that uh, wonderful point where we're actually going to make the cabbage rolls themselves. We're going to take a leaf, and the amount of filling that you're going to put in the leaf will obviously depend on the size of the leaf. The bigger the leaf, the little bit more we can put in there. So here's a kind of a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half. Of, it, of, the, the, of, the, of, the, of the stuffing. Now I'm going to roll this, the, the top part of the leaf, the thickest part of the leaf, over. So that's how it starts. And then I'm going to take the sides and I'm going to bring them over to the side like that and then I'm just going to roll that all up into one nice little neat package. And there's the cabbage roll. And I'm going to stuff that really nice and tight inside there. I'm going to take these and move them out of the way for right now. We're going to use the ones that are a little bit more. Okay, so same thing. So here we go. We got we got the leaf. We take the mixture, and sometimes what I do is I'll mix it around a little bit. Again, we take a good heaping teaspoon of, of of it, put it right in there like that, and then the top starts off here, gets it nice and tight. I, I put the sides over, take this one over, so it's like this, and then I just roll it up and place it down. Now sometimes when people are making these for the first time, it's, it can be a little bit tricky doing it in your hands. So it's okay to put it, on, put it on the table. So you could get a mixture like this, and then, let me see if I can move this out of the way here. Um, and you can actually put it down if you want, you know, on, on the table. You know, kind of do it this way. So just kind of roll and then roll it up. But I've made about 100,000 of these, so I can do it without having to do that. But if you want to do that, you can. So there it is. Now if you get a smaller uh, leaf, let's see if I can find a smaller one. Here's a little, little smaller one. You're going to just put less. Because you don't want them all falling out. You want to stay together. So there you go. Pull that over. Now sometimes they'll crack like that. See how it's kind of cracked up a little bit? That's okay because you're going to have this, this part of the, the top part of the leaf is just going to be able to seal that right up. And you can just go ahead and stick it right in there. Okay? So I'm going to let Melissa take over, and she's going to roll up the rest. And we're going to, once we get the first layer down and fill up, we're going to actually put some tomato soup on the first layer with a little bit of water, then the next layer, and another can of soup with some water, and then the next layer, because we've got quite a bit of cabbage. And the only thing that might run out is the filling that we've made, the rice and the, and the bacon filling. Okay? Okay, so Melissa's uh, doing pretty good here. This is the first time she's actually ever made them. So she's got the stuffing in there, as you can see. And... Um, She's using the little tip I gave her. She's actually putting it on the, on the table to fold them around, which is quite acceptable. And then she's just going to put those into the pot. And once we get the first layer going, we'll, we'll put some tomato juice on it. So she's doing a fine job for her first time. Thanks. <laughs> okay, Melissa has actually managed to get the first layer done. And as you can see, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the tomato soup and she's going to scoop it out and just one can and she's going to spread it evenly uh, amongst all of those leaves. Now, the, the, you know, one of the flavors of cabbage rolls, of course, is the tomato soup or tomato juice considered kind of like cabbage roll gravy, if you will. And so uh, more is better than less considering a can of Tomato soup only cost uh, very few dollars, a buck and a half, two bucks, whatever. Uh, more is better than less. Um, so don't be afraid to put all kinds of it. Spread it right around. If you don't have enough, take a half a can from another one. Probably can use another half can from the other one. And that becomes our first layer. So we're going to spread that all the way around, and it looks like a pizza, but it's not. Okay, very good, Melissa. 
All right, now we're going to basically make some more cabbage rolls and put another layer on top of this pot. Obviously having a big pot would be really helpful. You don't need a big pot, but you might need two little pots. Uh, the only thing you have to consider yourself if you're going to use smaller pots is you're going to need those leaves to make sure that you can line the pot so that they don't burn. Okay, very good. Okay, Melissa has now made uh, quite a wonderful batch and this is the third layer. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to pour some um, water. Um, we've got about a half a can of water in the tomato soup can and we're just going to kind of just evenly pour that on top. Just going to give it a pour. There you go. And that's just to give it a little bit more moisture in the, as they're cooking because they're going to go in the oven for a good three hours or so. Okay, very good. That's all we need. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold the leaves that are on the side and we're going to fold those leaves into the middle. And again, what we're trying to do here is to protect those cabbage rolls from, uh, from the baking process. And we've got a few leaves left over. So now what Melissa is going to do is she's going to take the leaves that are left over and she's going to cover and protect. And uh, it's okay if you kind of rip the cabbage up a bit to make sure that it, it will conform to, to what you need it to do. Just go ahead and give it a tear. And um, I often you know, end up with quite a few leaves left over sometimes, and if I do, I'll put as many on top as I can, because the top is what tends to get really blasted from the heat. So just kind of put as many as you can on there, covering it up as best you can. And we're pretty much done. So once this is done, we're going to put a lid on this, and we are going to stick them in the oven at 325, 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to leave it there for about three hours. Maybe, you know, it's up to you. Three hours is more than enough, sometimes a little longer if, uh, if you have the luxury of it a little bit more time. So, put the lid on top of that, Melissa, and we can call this a wrap. Okay, and if I ask Melissa to lift it up, she'd tell you that she'd need to be doing some curls because it's heavy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Melissa, on making your first batch of cabbage rolls. Let's stick them in the oven. Okay. Um, the piece de resistance, the final uh, step is taking them out of the oven. I've been in there for about uh, three, three and a half hours. Slide this out and we will add them and we'll put them down here. And what you will want to see is if I can move this out of the way for Melissa so she can actually. What you will see, of course, is the cabbage on top is very what? Brown. Brown, yeah, burnt, <laughs> right. And that's because they were in there for so long. So one of the reasons why we put cabbage on top and around is to protect them from being burnt. And there we go. We're going to remove that cabbage from the, um, from the top, and we are going to now eat them. So uh, there you go. That's how you make cabbage rolls. Or as we say in Ukraine, Balopshi. Thank you very much for watching.